Hello, bud. Hello, sir. I'm actually just now looking at my. I'm gonna. I'm gonna flip around here because my lighting is terrible. Oh, wait, you look like you was in a witness protection there. Yeah, you know, I was. Um, I was trying a new. I've I've done there. That's better. There. Oh, what a glowing face. I've done Zoom calls from uh, from other places in my house, and um, and I keep being told that. Uh, that my angle wasn't great. So I tried a new spot and obviously the lighting was terrible. Anyway. This one's perfect. Nor there. How are you, sir? Yeah, I'm really good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Where are you? I'm, I'm in, well, just outside of London. Nice. Yeah, that's what I always worry about. When I talk to like US artists, I always worry that I'm waking them up at the crack of dawn and I'm just like, let's do a rich, extensive history of all of your films. <laughs> let's go. Well, that was what, when I first said, when I first heard, and, and I said, uh, hey, you know, the, the perfect time for me would be, um, and I looked and I, I, I did my calculations, I saw 7 a.m. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> no. Sean, you no. wouldn't wake up at 7 for me. <laughs> I wouldn't wake up at 7 for, I don't know, who's the best interviewer in the world? I, besides you, I mean. Good save, I was waiting for that. Uh, uh, yeah, I wouldn't wake up at 7 for um, President Obama. How about that? I'd like to think we are very similar people as well. So I'll take that. I will take that. Yeah. yeah, I hear you guys get confused for one another quite often. Yeah, well, I was a great president. and He, he has quite a good blog about movies, so. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Apart from these Zoom chats at ridiculous hours, what else have you been uh, up to during lockdown? Well, you know, um, I, I'm actually, uh, I'm in qu quite a high risk group for, uh, for being susceptible to the virus. So. Um, I've been really, really locked down since March. Um, I'm, uh, I'm just sort of starting to think about what's next. Um, I'm incredibly fortunate in that I, my, my wife and I had moved into a new, a new place in December um, that we really liked. And otherwise, I think we would have been a little, uh, it, it would have been a much trickier time this year. Um, I'm also fortunate in that, it, you know, I had had a good enough sort of run of things that I didn't, that even though I lost out on doing, I, you know, I had a dozen conventions or something that I was going to do this year. But other than that, we, we had the, uh, you know, the, the, the privilege to be able to, um, to just kind of button, button up and stay in. And I've, I've really been inside since March. I have seen almost nobody. Wow. So, uh, so, but we're, we're getting to that place where we're starting to, uh, we're, we're starting to try to have to figure out what, what's, what's next. Um, you know, I, I have a job that I start in January, so I'm, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be inside forever. Um, but, uh, you know, I've been trying to, I've been writing a little bit and I, I'm not, a, I'm not really a writer, but I've written a little bit and I'm, and there's, so there's some projects I'm trying to, try to develop a little bit and um, watched a lot of TV and movies and watched a lot of basketball and, uh, you know. And you've also been uh, promoting some little film called The Suicide Squad, I believe. Just That is correct, sir. Yeah, done a little uh, promotion for that. It's nice now that people, you know, know who I'm playing and, uh, and uh, you know, I'm able to talk about it a, a tiny bit more than I was, you know, uh, several months ago. Yeah, I'm glad we can talk about you finally playing Harley Quinn. I mean, what a what a casting! <laughs> it was so close. It was between me and Margot for the role. Um, you know, she my screen test apparently was quite strong, um, but uh, I just lost out. And they said, you know, you might be right for the weasel. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know how you take that, but have you seen all of the weasel memes as well about people talking to their therapist? Oh, no, I haven't. This sounds delightful. It's incredible. It's just people talking to their therapist and their therapist is going, calm down, live action weasel can't hurt you. And then it just cuts to when weasel's licking the glass in, the, in his cell. It, it gives me chills. Like, I have a phobia of sharks, a full-blown phobia. I thought King Shark was going to be the one that gets me. It's Weasel. Weasel's the one that freaks me out the most. You know, I can tell you, um, and, and uh, th I think this is a scoop. I haven't, because I haven't, uh, I, I haven't admitted this before, but I licked that glass. 
just so you know. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I licked that glass and, and we have video footage of, of that happening. It was, it, it, you know, uh, to be honest though, it was interesting because the work that I've done as Rocket Raccoon, um, Rocket, Rocket the Raccoon, <laughs> yeah. um, and, uh, it, you know, is, is much different. It's motion reference and it's not, it's a, it's a different sort of um, process by which they put the character together. But um, for Weasel, I was doing, you know, um, the, the 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 real mocap where they where I had all, all the the balls and lights and colors and and uh, and they were really capturing everything I did, which um, which was uh, awesome. I hope they put sanitizer a all over the window and all over your tongue afterwards. Just I hope so. During this climate, I think that's best. Yeah, they cleaned the heck out of it, which I mean, I, you know, they, it, it was funny. They kept saying, hey, we're going to really, we're really going to clean this window very, very well. To which I responded, yeah, I hope so. Like, it never <laughs> to me. It's the bare minimum you could do. It never occurred to me that you were just going to let me lick it with, a, you know, with, a, with, with dirt and smudge all over it. Just writing in scenes now, like, Sean, there's, lick the floor, I don't know, whatever. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, my brother, um, I'm sure my brother's very anxious. I'm, I'm sure he's salivating at the opportunity to uh, to get me to lick a floor in a subsequent movie. I mean, <laughs> his older brother, I think that's sort of what he thinks I, I live for, is to uh, to do what he tells me to do. Don't worry, I think I've seen Meryl Streep do the exact same thing. I, oh, I yeah. think you're all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, speaking of your brother, he's he's said that, some of the characters in there, you'll learn to love them. They've got a heart. Whereas some of them are just gross throughout. Where does Weasel land on this spectrum? I think I know. I think I know where he lands on the lovely gross spectrum. But I want to hear from the Weasel's mouth. Look, man. Uh, <laughs> as the Weasel, I think... Um, I have a lot of, I got a lot of love for the character and I, I hope that audiences do too. I'm going to let you decide where Weasel falls on that spectrum. Um, so we're going for gross. And, you know, obviously with such a possibly gross character, I was wondering, like, when James is putting this film together and he's working out who's going to play what, will you two, like, talk it over and say, like, oh, I'd quite like to play Weasel? Or will he just be like, Sean, you are the weasel. End of. Enough said. It, it you know, it, it 100% it depends on the project. Um, in the case of Suicide Squad, um, I had never, I, I hadn't even read the script when I was, when I was offered the role. So it, it was much more like, hey, here's, here's the role that I, that, that I think would be perfect for you. And that's the role I want you to play. Um, but in the past, it, it has been a little looser. Um, in, uh, like for example, in uh, the Belko Experiment, which is a horror film we that he produced, wrote and produced, and and uh, and I was in uh, several years ago. In that case, and it was a you know it's a it's a smaller profile film, certainly in terms of budget and things like that. But in that case, he actually let me read the script and say, "Hey, let me know which character in this that you think that you would be that you would be right to play. Let me know what you think, you know." And uh, and, and that doesn't mean that whatever I say, he's going to give me. That just means that that he he extended the collaboration circle wider, so that if I say, "Hey, this is kind of what I think," after reading it, and then we agreed on on the role, we uh, you know we ended up agreeing on the role. But but you know, for Suicide Squad, no, it was kind of like, "Hey, I I wrote the Weasel for you. Do you want to play it?" And I'm like, "Of course." If he's got a rodent in mind he will give it to you. That's how, it, that's how it's been so far. I hate to say it, Sean. I hate to say it. It's pretty true, man. That's pretty true. And, I mean, you might know more about the lore of the comics than I do, but from what I understand, in the comics, the weasel was, was a man dressed as a weasel. But in, in the films, it looks different. He looks like a five-foot anthropomorphic weasel. Was that a, a decision you guys came across? Like? And if so, like, why? Why did you not just put on a weasel suit. That, that, that's all my brother, but yeah, no, this is not a man in a weasel outfit. This is a, you, you described it perfectly. This is an anthropomorphic weasel. It's, it's not, he's not even really, a, you, you gotta see, it's not even like a hybrid. He, he's pretty much just a huge weasel in a, a little bit in a man's body, but you know. So obviously, as you mentioned there, you've done Rocket the Raccoon. You've done We the Zell in uh, the Suicide Squad. Right. So I want to 
to complete this James Sean rodent trilogy, mm. if you could pick one more rodent in the world of cinema, I'm talking Remy from Ratatouille, you can be mm -hmm. Stuart Little. Ooh. Who would you love to play next? I mean, you've got the OG, Mickey Mouse. Yeah, no, I wouldn't want to. I certainly wouldn't want to debase <laughs> Mickey Mouse. <laughs> whatever, yeah. right, you know, twisted way that my brother and I would would uh, figure it out. But I, I think, um, you know, I, I, I'd love to play a squirrel. Maybe how about a squirrel? Oh yeah, and there, there's isn't there a squirrel superhero? Well, there's squirrel, there's squirrel girl, um, which I don't think I would be right for for a variety of reasons, but. Uh, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm open to whatever, whatever rodent comes my way next, whatever small mammalian character uh, comes my way. I, I've already got the screenplay of Rat Boy, and I'm going to send it your way. I can't wait for us. The Oscars, I hear them calling our name. So um, what's it like working with your brother, James, so closely? Like, I've worked with relatives before, and I'm not going to do it again, no we. <laughs> like, is it different working with other directors? Well, it's definitely different. Um, but, you, you know, the, the, the truth is, is that the, the, the answer to that question is, is more boring than, than, than you might like. Because, because, you know, honestly, we, we don't fight a lot as collaborators. And our, our jobs fit together very well. He's a writer, director, I'm an actor. So, you know, it's, he's my boss on set, but he's also been my older brother my whole life. So in terms of, in terms of status, we're already where we're supposed to be. There's no, you know what I mean? There's no like, and, and, uh, and, and honestly, if I'm being truthful, like I enjoy working with my brother more than I enjoy working with anybody because first of all he's very good at his job i think that if he weren't so good at his job maybe i'd have a different feeling about it maybe i'd be like <laughs> why do you why do you have this movie i should have it but but no he's he's worked hard to get what he he should get in his career um and uh and so yeah i i think that um that we have <clears throat> we have a um a history and a breadth of experience together where we have a shorthand where we can speak to one another. Um, and it's just very easy to collaborate with him. I know, you know, I, I can often tell after I do a take, I can often tell whether or not we've, we've gotten it right or not just by looking at his face. I don't even have to hear his direction. You know, I can look and see, no, we're not quite there yet. We have to keep going or I can see that his eyes are lit up in the right way and like, that's it, we got it. And, and it's, 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 it's not that I'm just being subservient to what he wants, it's that, that I trust him very much. And I know that he's, he's right when it comes to, uh, to, to you know, whether or not we're, we've gotten there with the scene. So um, honestly, you know, I, I, on, one, on one hand, I don't want to be the actor who relies on my brother for every job I ever get. I think I'm a professional. I've been a professional for a long time and I want to do other work. On the other hand, I could do a lot worse than to just do James Gunn movies because he's really, he's really good and he knows what I'm good at and we work well together. On that note as well, like the cast, the cast of the old Suicide Squad, they were like tight. Is that the same sort of vibe on set for all of you guys? Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't know much about the about what it was like for the the other movie. I, you know, I uh, I, I know from talking to Joel Kinnaman a little bit that they that they, that they got to be uh, close. But um, all I all I can comment on is my experience with this film, which was that it was just a remarkable group of actors, and um, that it, it was. It, it, it kind of just goes to show you what the modern, um, you know, tentpole movie can be that you'd have, I mean, I, I, I don't even know, 15, 20 accomplished, you know, actors who have like extensive resumes and have done all sorts of brilliant work. And, um, and, and every part of it bore that out. I mean, every, 
every day on set, you could tell, not only was I working with good people, but that I was working with really tremendous actors. I mean, people were, everybody is, you know, pardon my language, everyone in that cast is on top of their shit. And like, and, uh, and I think we got along great. And I would love to, you know, I would go, I, I would go in the, in the trenches, the trenches of movie making, which are great. <laughs> Not as lethal. A little softer than the trenches of war, I understand. But, but I would go into the trenches of movie making with every single one of those actors to a person again. And, uh, and I think they would say, say the same. And the, and the truth is that even though, you know, from my point of view, everyone got along great, to me, that's less important than how we got along as, as co-workers. And are we, are, are we all telling the story together? Like, that's... That to me is 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 as exciting as any any other kind of relationship you can make. I'm I'm glad that you spoke to Joel about the old film as well. Like, did he tell you about Jared Leto's gifts to the rest of the cast? You know, I heard a little. I, I heard a little bit about some of those things. I I think that uh, sound a little uh, sound a little nutty to me. I don't know, but it's great. It's great. It brought them all closer. Great. I don't have any. You know, I don't like what. I mean, I, yeah, I feel like you guys on this film sort of nailed the ambiance. Like, you became friends, you all got on together, you didn't send each other, like, dead pigs. Like, I feel like you nailed the ambiance there. No, I wouldn't have enjoyed being sent to dead pig as a, you know, as, a, um, as someone who doesn't eat pigs and uh, as an animal rights advocate. I, I probably wouldn't have loved to be sent to dead animal, but that's not for me to judge. I, don't, I wasn't sent one, so I'm not going to judge. Well, if you get a large box from me at your front door today, just don't open it. Return it. I don't know what's in it. Definitely not, definitely not a dead pig. What? I don't know. Move on. <laughs> but uh, we were talking about Joel there. He's been saying that he expects sui the Suicide Squad to be R-rated. Now, mm -hmm. I want to know who's the sweariest character on screen and who's the sweariest actor off screen? Oh, that's, that's an excellent question. Um... On screen, oh gosh, that's a good question. I think it's probably Harley on screen, actually. Um, you know, she's a bit of a maniac, isn't she? Um, and uh, but but certainly not off screen. Um, you, you know, off screen, I'm gonna say Pete Davidson, uh, only because. If I'm wrong, he won't mind that I called him out on it. He's still going to say, hey, man, I don't care if you say it's me, whatever. <laughs> what I wouldn't have given for you to just gone, Viola Davis. Oh, what a, what a foul mouth she has. <laughs> but it also looks like the language isn't the only thing that's pretty explosive in all this. We've seen a few little set pieces, a few pretty epic scenes. What scene, what sequence did you most enjoy filming without obviously telling me too much? What was the moment you was like, this is incredible? You know, we had a couple of days on set um, in, in that, that took place. I, I, I can't, I really can't say that much, um, you know, but we had a couple of days on set with, with the larger group where there was a whole bunch of us and we were all able to kind of get to know each other a little bit better. And, uh, and then collaborate in, in the um, in the in the, uh, the helicopter, and uh, and I think those were probably my favorite days on set. But it was it was it, it was pretty great, top to bottom. So we're hoping that this is the year the Oscars introduce stunts into the Academy. The Suicide Squad might have a chance. And again, talking back about the old Suicide Squad, that won the Oscar for best makeup and hairstyle. Now. Mm -hmm. Obviously, with all of the new regulations with the Oscars and new rules, if the Suicide Squad could win one Oscar, whether it's for a performance, story, directing, whatever, who do you think would warrant that Oscar? And again, you can't just say Pete Davidson. <laughs> Why not? Uh, oh, gosh. Do I give the dipl diplomatic answer? I mean, why would <laughs> if I could choose one, why wouldn't I choose Best Picture? Um, you know, like, Good thinking. If, you're, if, you're, if you're giving me one, that's, the, you know, or I would probably give my brother best director because I think he's been, 
he's been robbed of a nomination at, at least once, if not twice before. Yeah, I'm glad that you gave me another answer. I should have ruled out best picture there. <laughs> you found my loophole, you beat me. But incidentally, I agree with you. The, the whole thing about stunts, you know, not having an Oscar for best stunt is, is uh, ridiculous. And it's, it's uh, and I, I, you know, I can tell you from, you know, working on the Avengers movies and working with Marvel and working with people that like, the, the the work that the the stunt that the, the stunt crew does is extraordinary extraordinary and dangerous and um you know they whatever i don't know i it, you know what man to be honest oscars are stupid like <laughs> why do we need to all get together and dress up and give each other awards but if we did those those deserve, you know the stunt people deserve awards as much as any actor does for sure 100% agree with you, especially when there's film, every film has stunts in them now. Like, you can't not watch a film. If they redid, I don't know, Titanic now, there'd be explosions and motorbikes and everything. Like, yeah, you know, you've heard, I'm sure you've heard that, uh, that there's some a actors like Tom Cruise who do all his own stunts, or probably not all, but almost all his own stunts. I, I've been really sh shooting in my career, I've been really going, um, for I, I really want to be the first actor who's ever done none of his own stunts ever. <laughs> um, and uh and i think that i i'm solidly in that pocket right now. i think there's a world record in there for this i think you might get a guinness world record yeah i won't even slightly trip in a scene i won't you know i won't i won't bang my finger on the side of a table i won't do anything it's so weird when they get your your cv and they go he won't bang his ankle. He won't hit his hand. He will lick a window, though. Hmm, what a weird! Yeah, I don't like to. I don't even like to be yelled at in scenes. So uh, you know, yeah, I, I, well, I, I don't do it. They just dub it in after someone whispers, "I hate you," and then just scream <laughs> at it afterwards. Yeah, yeah off screen. Yeah, we, on your, you can yell at me when we're on your coverage. When we're on my coverage, whisper very kindly. And as someone who says they don't care about the Oscars. I'm going to ask you another question about the Oscars. I'm sorry. Beautiful. Love it. This is horrible journalism right here. Who, who knew? No, I like it. It's funny. But obviously you've done motion capture performances before, as you said, with Weasel, with Rocket Raccoon. Now, Andy Serkis, he's been sort of pioneering in the way of like saying that there should be a motion capture performance Oscar. Where do you mm. stand on that? Do you think there should be one now? I don't know that I'm equipped to answer that question. I mean, it, uh, uh, what I am equipped to say is that is that it it is um, it is acting just like other actors are actors. It is a skill. It's a learned skill that is that also has that, that in a nuanced way is different from from traditional acting. Um, I, I don't know if there's enough content and material to have a full field of, of, uh, of, of actors who would be Oscar worthy in a given year. So um, I don't really know, but, but to, yes, to double back to what I said before, I also kind of don't really care. I mean, I, 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 is, 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 I always think of my job as an actor as being a, a, uh, a soldier in the art of storytelling. So, so like my, my job is to assist the filmmaker tell the story however I need to. And so sometimes for me, that's been motion reference. Sometimes it's motion ca capture. Often it's just me and my face on camera. Um, I don't know. I, I, in terms of what people want to get together and vote on for awards, I let them do that. That's really not for me. What I really liked is that was your second analogy about war. In this interview, you've mentioned war twice during this now. I'm really worried that the Suicide Squad's taken a turn on oh, you. Gosh, yeah, I know. And please, you know, to people who cancel people, I know that filmmaking is nothing like war, believe me. Um, I'm not. I mean, I, I, it's just sometimes they're handy analogies. Be kind to me. You're brought into the war. You're taking Golden Globes with you, like, we'll win this. Yeah. I've got this. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm like, what you know, there's not much difference between myself and... The soldiers who landed in Normandy, I'm not going to say that. I won't say <laughs> We'll just rest. rewind that. There you go. Done. <laughs> well, he, well, his career's over. 
<laughs> that's what I like to do. I like to ruin careers. You should see my interview with Mel Gibson. Oh, I ruined him. <laughs> right. Well, let's jump from DC to Marvel. Mm. Um, your, your brother, he's spoken about a rift between DC and Marvel fans. But he said, like, you know, there are some diehard fans that will just go to town on each other. But for the most part, it's, they're just movie fans. What, what's been your experience? Obviously, you're part of both of these fandoms now. What, what have you found with DC and Marvel fans? I mean, you know, everybody wants to see good movies, right? Yeah. So even if you're firmly in the Marvel camp or firmly in the DC camp, that doesn't mean that you want the, the other movies to suck. You know, like, why would you be rooting for any movie to fail? So I, I sort of, yeah, I feel a little outside of it. You know, I, I said before, I go to a lot of conventions and I, I see people sort of have little spats about it. And insofar as it's fun for them to argue and fight about it, then I'm all in favor of it. Yeah, go, go to town arguing about which is better. But if people get, when people start to get legitimately upset or legitimately angry, I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't think I, it sounds to me like something children would do, not something adults should be doing. And, uh, y you know, there's no reason why we don't have a, a robust enough um, fan base for both that we shouldn't be rooting for both to be great. Shouldn't all the Marvel movies be great and all the DC movies to be great? And and then also extend from there. And shouldn't there be even more film franchises that, that we root for to be great? Um, so yeah, as far as the fighting between them, man, I don't know, God bless them, but it's, uh, it's, it's not fun. You could say it's like a war, right? Yeah, right. I just right. wanted to get a hat trick there, a war hat trick. Well, I, like, I really enjoy following James on Instagram because he's been answering a lot of fan questions about Guardians of the Galaxy 3. And in such detail as well, one person asked him if there was going to be a death in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. And James, being this incredible like writer, director, just linguist that he is, replied, yeah. And, <laughs> you know, I thought, wow, wow, that, that was powerful. And I want to play a sort of game with you now. In okay. hopefully more than one word, you'll respond. Um, I'm going to give you two characters at a time from Guardians of the Galaxy. And it's up to you to essentially save one. And the next okay. one will be brought up for the chop. In your opinion, this is nothing, okay. there's no reflection on who might die in Guardians of the Galaxy, but we'll just start off. And, and I, can, I, I can even help you out here. I have not read Guardians 3. So, um, so, so uh, e even, if, e even if fans were trying to get something out of what my response is, they can't because I don't know the answers. So, <laughs> right, ahead. there you go. Right, let's start. Gamora or Drax? Who do you want to save? Always Drax. Okay, so now we've got Gamora versus Star Lord. You know, this is my family. Why are you asking me to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure how horrific is this? What a horrible thing to do. I don't know which one makes the story better. That's the one I want to save. I I feel sorry because we've already lost Gamora once already. And I only even said Drax. Nothing against Gamora. I just love Drax, and I love I, I love Dave Bautista. And like, if you you know, if you can save Drax, you do, right? Um, yeah, I agree. We've already lost. We've already lost Gamora once. Let's let's save Gamora and let Star Lord die. So you're going Star Lord or Nebula? Yeah, I'll say, I'll say Nebula. I, I spent so much, you, you know, in, in, the, in the period between Infinity War and Endgame, only, only Rocket and Nebula survived the, survived the snap, right? And so as playing Rocket, I just got to know and be so much closer with Nebula over that time. So I'm going to save Nebula. Right. And now finally, Star-Lord versus and this might hurt Groot who are you one of them has to go one of them has to go one of them safe is it how old is is it teenage Groot how will he, he he'd be teenage well, he'd be a little bit older now in Guardians of the Galaxy 3 wouldn't he yeah, be, let's say he's teenage Groot and then I'll save Star-Lord 
Yeah, so you're you're wiping out Groot forever. Teenagers. I don't need to. I, I can't with the teenagers anymore. <laughs> Social media and the video games and all that and the and the uh, what do the kids call it? TikTok. I'm not interested in that. Let's save Star. Wars. I was going to put Rocket Raccoon in there, but I realized if you killed him off, you'd lose a paycheck. Why would you do that? That would be a foolish yeah, mistake. Although, although it would it would probably be better on my. Uh, my ankles and my legs and my knees if if rocket were to meet his demise i'm getting older and uh i don't know how much more rocket playing i have in me it's quite physically demanding well from rocket to your other character craglin um another another fan asked james if craglin was going to get a bigger story arc in the third film and you guessed it james simply replied with yeah so <laughs> So what would you like to see for your character from the future? Like, what would you like to see happen to Kraglin? You know, I hope that Kraglin learned, like, we, we left off with Kraglin where he still, you know, he, he obviously hadn't figured the arrow out. And I think he, he still had a lot to learn. Kraglin's had an unusual journey going from being like the right-hand man, not really knowing what's right or wrong, deciding that, Yandu was wrong, but then having to, to, to change his mind and go come back to the fold. Um, and, uh, and, and so I don't, I just, I want the best for Craglin. I hope that he learns, but I also, again, back to this idea of being a, um, you know, let's not say soldier, let's say a, a cog in the machine of storytelling. Like, I, I don't, um, like one thing that's, that, that I enjoy as an actor is that, it's not my job to, to, to think about what I want to see from the, from the characters. Like that's, that's the job of the script and the storytellers and the movie itself and, and the fans. The fans, I'm, I'm, I'm way more interested, for example, in what you think that, that, and what you would like to see from Cracklin in the third movie. What I want to see is not really, it, it is immaterial. Like, because my job is to just play the, is to play the moments and to play the scenes. What I want to happen, that's not really in my job description. So, uh, so I always like to hear what fans want, um, what they want to see, and that is compelling to me. But uh, you know, who cares what I think? I didn't write it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. I don't know why I asked. Who bloody cares, Sean? <laughs> That's my that's my circuitous way of not answering your question. Finally, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a bit of a turn here. Um, because obviously we got some news this year that not just shook the Marvel the Marvel world, it shook everyone. And it was the, the really shocking, horrific passing of Chadwick. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it was, it was really, it, well, it really shocked me. And as someone who was, I, I personally, I, I really wanted to just meet him and be in his sort of presence. I, he seemed like this really awe-inspiring character. And, um, you know, you, you got to share a set with him in Avengers Endgame. You got to work with him throughout the, the, the Avengers, the MCU. So I was just wondering, as someone who has met him and been a part of his life, like, how will you remember Chadwick? Um, yeah, it was, uh, it, it was very hard for me to hear about his passing. And I want to preface this by saying that, um, that I did not know Chadwick well. Um, we, we, we met a few times and we were on set together, but we didn't, we didn't ever really interact in any scenes. And, um, and, uh, I, I, and so I, I, I don't want to ever project that I knew him better than, but I, I, um, like, like, I guess almost everyone, I did not know that he was, um, that he was sick. I didn't know that, uh, that, uh, he had cancer and, um, I don't know. He he uh, he struck me as a as a guy who um, who had the weight of weight of the world on his shoulders, and uh, I had always imagined that that was just from the pressure of being this you know new star and being thrown into this this world where so many people were projecting so much onto him, which can be a lot of weight it's I, i've seen it with a lot of actors where they're they're you know they have all of a sudden become big stars out of just out of nowhere sort of 
Um, and so I thought, oh gosh, this is a guy who's, who's taking all of that in. And, and uh, it turns out when I sort of reverse, think about that from the other side that, you know, the weight that he was carrying was, was like, obviously so much greater than the weight of, of any kind of, uh, of uh, stardom or anything. I, I, um, I, I will say that I, that, that I remember being at lunch with, with him the first day that we were on set together and we were kind of at opposite ends of a couple of tables. And I was like, Oh, that's, you know, that's Chadwick. I, I haven't met him and I, I should go introduce myself um, because we haven't worked together. And, you know, and then I kind of got caught up in what I was doing. And at the end of lunch, I felt these hands on my, my shoulders, like, you know, just give me a friendly little shoulder rub. And, uh, and I looked up and it was Chadwick and he's like, how you doing, Sean? Is everything, everybody treating you okay? Everything going okay here? And I was like, yeah, yeah, thanks. And I was totally startled by it. We didn't have a conversation. That was it. He went on what he was doing. And, uh, and I was just like, I was like, oh, he, he knew who I was and he knows that I'm new here. And he, he cared about what I was doing. And, um, and uh, I will, um, you know, I, I I don't have much to say other than that. I, I, I think um, he was a great dude, and uh, I wish uh, I wish we had more time with him. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people are going to miss him, and you know what you said there was just so lovely, and it 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 just sounds like everyone who's spoken about him has similar stories to you of how just kind and and caring and just sort of selfless he was looking out for everyone so no thank you so much for just sharing that with me as I said as someone who's you know been a fan of his for ages and has always longed to have met him and just been around him it, it was it was quite lovely to hear mate yeah and, and to, you know to, to to try to not be too you know modeling about the whole thing it's like I'm, I'm also grateful that that the world got to see what they, you know, that the world got what they got from, from him as a, as a, uh, as a person and as a man. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to be able to, when you don't have a lot of years on this planet, um, it's nice to be able to still make that imprint and make that and have that have an effect on people. And, uh, and there's there's something to be grateful for in in addition to sorrowful. He, he's he's left a legacy. He really yeah. has. And um, yeah, I'm just going to say thank you for a for sharing that with me and for for chatting to me. I've I've really enjoyed it. It's been funny. It's been very moving. It's been a bit of a <laughs> roller coaster, mate. Like it, yeah. It yeah. Now you should be about ready. It should be late enough there. You should be ready for a pint. Uh, I'm I'm ready to wake up the next day for for work now. Yeah, I, I've gone straight through it now. You've got your what what your like morning espresso to start now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, actually, I think my 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 wife, um, bless her heart, I think she she stopped the the delivery guy from ringing the doorbell so that so that they wouldn't interrupt us. But uh, she's got coffee and breakfast coming up. Oh, I've just got the flat to myself, lonely and in the dark now. I might even come over. I could do with a coffee. Might take you some time to get here. Well, you're going to have to make a few things. I don't like them cold. Oh, also, you're not invited. I forgot. That's, that's another part of it. Oh, sorry. You broke up a little bit there. It sounded <laughs> like you are invited. So I'll, I'm coming over now. Right. See you in a sec, mate. <laughs> no, honestly, thank you so much for chatting to me, you Sean. Got it. Yeah. Sam excited for the Suicide Squad is a biblical understatement. Oh, nice. Dude, it is good. It is really good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it would have been awful if you went, it's actually quite bad. Don't, don't get excited. <laughs> hey, I didn't have to say that. I could just say, oh, great. I can't wait for you to see it. But no, I can't wait for people to see it. It's freaking good. Yeah. The fact that everyone in that, in that teaser said, it's the best thing they've worked on. Like James, who has done Guardians of the Galaxy, said, this is the best thing he's done. Like, that excites me. That excites me. It's not a competition, but man, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. I can't wait. At least we've only got 
several more months to get through until I can watch it now. <sighs> I'll true. make it. I'll make it. You keep brewing me coffees until then, <laughs> and then we'll watch it together. Deal? All right. Sounds good. Right. Thank you very much, mate. Good chatting to you. All right. Be well. Nice talking to you.